Hello there and welcome friends. This guide will be all about how to get and recruit and also build the secret companion of Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, who is Trevor, Sociel's brother. Trevor comes only during chapter 4, but getting him requires you to do Sociel's quest in a certain way. During the course of Sociel's personal quests, you will have to pick the dialogue choices in a proper order, otherwise you won't be able to get Trevor. As like most quests in the game, this does have multiple outcomes, and depending on your choices, well, either you get Trevor or you don't, and of course you want to get him. So without further ado, here's how it goes. The first one lets you get the Immaculate Petal Shield in the Lost Chapel area during Chapter 2. Be sure to have the shield equipped on Sociel, at all times you can choose one of his free slots, like the fourth here. You don't really need to have it equipped in his main slot, just leave it here, and that will be enough for later on. And starting from his chapter 2 quest, you already have to pick a certain dialogue option. As I said before, these will all come naturally during Sociel's personal quest, so you don't have to worry about triggering them, just do his quest. So the first one should be, you don't know what your brother has endured in this war, perhaps the person you once knew is gone. The second choice is, the battlefield changes people, your brother isn't the first to be hardened by war. And lastly, during Chapter 3, once you return to the Lost Chapel area to meet the Hell Knight deserters, you'll have to pick. Your brother hoped to keep his heart pure, but he couldn't. Alas, this happens to many people in the war. And this should be enough. Socio's brother will now be seen as a victim in his eyes, which lets you recruit him in during Chapter 4. You'll soon learn that his brother is actually being held in the Battle Bliss arena. All you have to do is first talk with the Black Mask Demon, in the flash markets area and ask him about Socio's brother. After that, simply head to the Battle Bliss Arena, talk with the arena manager, say that your companion Socio needs to meet the dire one, have Socio enter the arena to face Trevor. I believe you can choose both brother is that you and also wait here. And here we go. Now be sure to pick Socio raises his shield. After that, pick Trevor, what have they done to you? No, that's not what matters. You're safe now, it's over. I've come for you, let's go home. And that's it, it will be enough for you to recruit Trevor. Thank you. This is all possible because of you. I'm free. I can't believe I'm finally free. Now, in case you are already at chapter 4 and you haven't picked the correct options, but you still want to recruit Trevor, there is a way to do it through the aid of mods. In this case, the Toy Box mod, I already have a guide link to the site here on how to install it. So just head to the Search and Pick tab, write Socio Counter, and you'll be able to see all of the counters that work as flags for this quest. There's actually three counters, Hero, Traitor and Victim, and the one we want is Victim Counter. So just increase it here by clicking the arrow, so that it is higher than the other ones. And I do believe this should be enough for you to recruit Trevor when arranging the fight with the arena manager. So be sure to do this before doing that. So as soon as you get Trevor, well you might have already heard that he spilled this all over the place. He starts as a two-handed fighter with five levels, then he also has four levels in Armored Hulk, which is a Barbarian class, then three in Hell Knight, already incompatible because Barbarians have to be chaotic or neutral even in Hell Knight's lawful. And lastly, he is also a fallen paladin with two levels in paladin. And of course, he doesn't really gain any bonus from the paladin's abilities because he is chaotic neutral instead of lawful good. So yeah, he's probably, <laughs> as far as all of the characters in the game, he's the most out there companion. Fear not because we can still savage his build and make him into a competent character. As you can see here we have good attack bonus, very high damage, great critical hits, even our armor class is decent despite being a two-handed character, and also saving throws. And this is all because by the point we get Trevor, we easily have enough buffs to make anything viable. Even if you were to take the short duration buffs out of equation here, Trevor would still have something like 60 to 62 attack bonus, and this is with power attack on, never mind all of the other bonuses missing, that only show during combat like around plus 10 from Scald Rage, Scylla could provide plus 11 from her Mark of Justice, plus 4 from Outflank and so on, so Trevor can certainly be a competent hitter in melee, because at the end of the day he still has full levels only in high base attack bonus classes, so he can achieve the maximum base attack bonus of plus 20 for up to 5 attacks per round, not counting all of the attacks of opportunities you'll get, 
because of his great critical range. So let's get started with our Trevor build now. He does come at around level 15, so you only have 5 levels to play around with. The way to go, for me at least, is continue progression in fighter and two-handed fighter. We can certainly use the extra feats fighter has to offer, because Trevor, as you can see here, he has a lot of nice feats, but he doesn't have any teamwork feats, which is a downer. Honestly, as far as the two-handed character, he does get the best feats, so he has power attack, heavy armor focus is kinda useless, Cleave, which is great, Cleaving Finish, amazing, and then Great Cleave and Improved the Cleaving Finish, which are all great. Greater Bull Rush is kinda useless. He does have Weapon Training in two-handed weapons, which is good too. And he also comes with Weapon Focus and Weapon Specialization into Falchions, which are honestly one of the best two-handed weapons besides Fall Shards because of their incredible critical range. So let us skip Fighter and Two-Handed Fighter. This way, Trevor will at least get another bonus from weapon training, the backswing ability for extra damage on all of his attacks besides the first. Unfortunately he cannot get a greater power attack, but you know we can make do with what he has. His skills at this point don't really matter that much. I would keep athletics, mobility and then knowledge world. He can at least cook for your party if you want. Honestly your first feat without a doubt should be improved critical and then falchion. It's kinda crazy that Trevor does not have this feat Considering he gets both focus and specialization into Falchion, anyways. As for a second feat, the choice is also a given outflank. As I've said many times, outflank is an amazing feat. Every single one of your melee party members should always have this. It can generate a lot of attacks of opportunity for your party. Never mind also increasing your attack bonus when flanking the enemy to plus 4 instead of just plus 2. So one of the best feats in the game. For level 16, well we want to increase strength so that we can later at level 20 get 24, making our modifier plus 7. He does have an odd dexterity score, but you know it doesn't matter. And level 16 is when we also get the pack swing ability as a two-handed fighter, so whenever Trevor's attack with a falchion and does a full attack, all of his attacks besides the first get double his strength bonus on damage rolls, which is rather powerful. He will end up with 5 normal attacks, 4 for normal progression and 5 with haste. So that's 4 attacks to get this bonus. For level 17, greater weapon focus, falchion. And then I would go with combat reflexes because Trevor, well he only has a plus 2 mod through dexterity but you know at this point we can cast Cat's Grace or Mass Cat's Grace to turn that into a plus 4 modifier. So that's an extra plus 4 attacks of opportunity he'll get you making a round. Which does matter a lot because falchions have amazing critical range. And if your party also has teamwork feats, well, let's just say you'll get huge chains of attacks of opportunity to drown the enemies in them for a very high amount of free attacks per round. For level 19, we aren't really going to get anything special by going farther besides an extra feat. We already have two stacks of weapon training, and the other one only comes, well, we won't get enough levels to reach it. So I'll be choosing Ranger and then Demon Slayer. This way Trevor gets a plus 2 on both his attack bonus and also damage against all demons in the game. And it's also a full base attack bonus class, but you can also go with something like Slayer. As for a feat, well I would go with Seize the Moment for even more attacks of opportunity. And honestly at this point we already have the best two handed feats. And unfortunately Trevor cannot get greater weapon specialization so we'll make do with this. As for level 20, I would just keep fighter and then 200 fighter to 10, your last increasing strength. And as for a feat, anything you want can work here. I'll go with improved initiative, just because I like the chances of acting before the enemy. But at this point in the game, so level 20, it's not going to matter that much. You can of course, instead of 200 fighter, go with let's say Slayer, but you will only get study target as a move action, which can be somewhat annoying because Trevor has to actually move to the enemy to reach them first. Now let's talk about Trevor's mythic progression, and the good thing is you actually have full control over his mythic progression, unlike let's say Corrupted Arushale, who already comes with a lot of these picked for her. So this can actually help savage Trevor's somewhat questionable build class spread. For the first one, well, as he is a character with high critical range because of his falchion, ever ready. For mythic level 2, mythic power attack. You can of course already pick mythic improved critical here, but it doesn't matter because 
when you first get Rev Reward, you have what? Either 5 or 6 entire mythic levels to play around with. For mythic level 3, as Trevor is a two-handed character who doesn't have a reach weapon, so a falchion, and cannot ride a pet, I would go with less than to increase his survivability. This way, chances are he'll never die. For mythic rank 4, mythic improved critical and then falchion. For mythic level 5, I would personally go with mythic charge, only because I really like charging with all of my characters. If you've watched some of my videos, then you probably know this already. And I also have a guideline to the side here on what makes charge such a powerful strategy and how to easily do it, even out of battle, to catch the enemy unaware and flat-footed for free hits on them. For mythic rank 6, I would go with mythic weapon specialization and then falchion. We don't actually need greater weapon specialization to benefit from the full amount, which is plus 5 to our damage rolls. You can also choose mythic weapon focus first, I prefer to leave it for later because at the point we get Trevor we already have a massive amount of buffs to highly increase his attack bonus. The same is not true for damage, it's a lot harder to get high damage going. For mythic level 7 we honestly already have the best of the mythic abilities. I suppose you can go with limitless rage because Trevor does have rage as a armored hulk barbarian, but you know his rage power isn't that good because he doesn't have enough levels. Still, we'll have infinite uses of it, so why not? You can of course pick this earlier instead of mythic charge if you prefer. For mythic rank 8, mythic weapon of focus and then falchion, but you can ignore this if you don't care for higher AB and pick mythic improved initiative instead which will highly increase the chances of your Trevor acting before the enemy. Even as a character that doesn't have that good dexterity, because the bonuses from mythic initiative is massive, equal to your mythic ranks, so at this level it would be plus 8 to his initiative, and consider me already have plus 4 from the normal initiative, that's plus 12, besides his dexterity. As for mythic level 9, I would go with unrelenting assault just to increase his damage even further, although at this point chances are you'll be killing anything in just a single round anyways, so you won't get more than plus 2. And of course if you want your Trevor to have some supporting mythic abilities, then you can also pick Leading Strike and Inspirational Leader, but I like to leave them for Scylla. Now this character doesn't get mythic rank 10 because we only get it at the very end game, so before the final boss, unless you are a demon, but if you were wondering what I would pick at mythic level 10, then certainly mythic improvement initiative, or if you didn't pick mythic weapon focus, that instead. Alright, so let's talk now about gear for our Trevor. For the amulet slot, well Trevor isn't a main character, so I don't see a point in having him equipped with Alexis magnifying amulet. A good choice is the voracious spirit amulet that you get at the end of Camellia's personal quest during chapter 5. Besides that, you can also go with amulets that increase natural armor class, such as amulets of natural armor, the highest being plus 6, which is 1 point over what you can get from let's say bark skin. For armors, well it doesn't really matter that much for Trevor, because you can still use reach spells and by the point you get him you have legendary proportions, so he is pretty big and can attack from behind your tanks and so on, so the enemies won't focus on him. But anyways, you can always go with mithril full plates. For the belt slot, belts that increase both strength and constitution, the highest amount being plus 6. For glove slots, gloves of dueling of course, because well, Trevor is still a fighter, even if you only get him 5 levels in fighter, he'll always have at the very least one stack of two-handed weapon training. With these gloves we can increase that by plus 2 for a total of plus 3 or plus 4 if you increase progression in two-handed fighter. For the boot slot, well the Ronak sacrifice boots are the best in the game, I already have a guide link to the side here on how to get them, but if you want to save them for your main character or dexterity based character, you can always go with the boots of stampede to increase his damage when charging, or also the boots of freest rain for a permanent freedom of movement effect. The helmet slot, well, shiny the helmet is the best for strength based characters, so Trevor can achieve something like 44 strength. This is a very missable helmet, so if you don't know how to get it, be sure to follow the guide I have here linked to the side. And this is actually perfect for Trevor because you can only recruit Trevor during chapter 4 and this is also the only point in the game that you can get the Shy Lily helmet, at least the relic that you'll later have to enchant through the storyteller. For the goggle slot, as usual, the goggles of piercing gaze for the plus insight bonus on attack and damage against outsiders, so all demons. 
I have it off here because it's kinda killing my demon helmet vibe look. I really like the look of the Shy Lily helmet. Looks pretty evil and cool. For the cloak as usual, cloaks of resistance with the maximum bonus to increase Trevor's saving throws to the max. For rings, the ring of imminent demise can be good. It does give you a plus 2 competence bonus on attack and damage with two-handed weapons. And also has a neat effect of attempting to knock the enemy down whenever you get an attack of opportunity. And because of our very high critical range of our falchion, we will be getting a lot of them. I also like going with the ring of evasion, just to avoid the annoying area of effect damage spells from some demons in the late game. Even as a fighter, Trevor can still get decent reflex. And those abilities from demons don't really have that high difficulty class anyways. The braces don't matter that much, I have the braces of breaching here. Because they have a neat effect that whenever you get a critical hit, the enemy has to pass a fortitude saving throw or become vulnerable to piercing damage, so they'll take 50% more piercing damage, which is great for your ranged characters and also dagger and short sword users. The difficulty class is low at 23, but you know it's a free effect, so why not? There's always a chance the enemy might roll low. As far as the weapon slot, Trevor is built to use falchions, which is great because falchions have crazy critical range. I am using the last version of Finian here because the brilliant energy property is amazing. But as far as all of the falchions you can get in the game, I also have a guide linked here that well has everything you need to know about falchions, including progression from the early mid to the late game. The quick slot isn't really that important for Trevor. You can always use the dragon familiar Jarsigax if you want a little bit of elemental damage. And also the lucky dice for a luck bonus to attack, damage or armor class. Now let's take a look at our Trevor in action against a lot of late game mythic demons. And also how high his damage can be, both in normal and critical hits. Reap what you sow! So on a normal hit we do something like 170 damage, and on a critical hit we can deal close to 500 damage, pretty great, right? Especially for a character with such an out there build. In this example here we actually deal more than 500 damage to the Baylor. This does have a skull to support us of course, but honestly you should always have a skull for any melee party, so long as you can spare the slot. If you don't want one you always have Scylla with her powerful Mark of Justice. And we actually have a 90 final modifier to our attack bonus without Mark of Justice, without Guarded Harv, even with a penalty from Profane Him. So, you know, we are going to be hitting the enemies easily, even late game bosses on Unfair with Trevor. So long as you are properly prepared, of course. Well, so this was it for my Trevor guide, everyone. I know his build is all over the place, but he can still make for a competent character if you want to use him, and he does have unique dialogue content. Quite a surprising amount for a character gained so late in the game that is also a special and secret companion. If you found this guide helpful, as usual, please remember to support the channel if you can by liking, subscribing and even becoming a member. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends!